Oh. Was that a voice crack? Anyways, I decided today I'm gonna make a video in the middle of the night. And that is my TV. Pretty smart. I haven't thought about that. And I'm probably very stupid for that. So I can show literally whatever I want. What are the IEMs that we're gonna help me talk about today? These, I don't think they need any explanation. They, just, they, they are the legend themselves. The Moondrop Starfield. These, they were the goddamn champion, the slayer of good giants. They just basically, they're so good. And I just don't want to, you know, bear a channel that does not have a review of this. So today, I'm gonna be re re reviewing. So let's start with the start. And then we will move on to some comparison of the new arriver. And you know what it is, it's the Aria. I listened to that as well. And I have my old favorite, the Moondrop KXXS at the end. And we are gonna do a parallel comparison between these three. Basically, um, what'd you say? Brother from a different mother? Or sister from a different father? No, that doesn't work. Uh... And also, you probably have realized that I'm probably not gonna do that kind of stupid intros anymore. <laughs> no, I don't wanna do that ever, ever again. So anyways, without any further ado, Let's start with the Starfield. The Starfield, oh man. You have heard of the stories, and I have heard of it. I actually went to the headphone shop, and then I basically I sat down, gave it like 45 minutes of listen. I never really listened to it like that closely before, but now that I realize that I, you know, I spent so much time with it, I know what the fuss is about. The Starfield just such, basically, it's just a great all-rounder. It sounds so comfortable. It's just such a great entry pair if you want to, you know, drag your friend out of the beats and into some tasteful earphones. These are the pair. And let's start, let's start, you know, with the old things. Let's start with the look. Can we say that is probably one of the best design ever? Like, I know the paint chip is a problem, but it's beautiful. You know, it's through a TV, so I'm probably not sure about like how beautiful it is on TV, but in the hand, it really, the paint sparkles in your hand. It feels like, you know, one of those, it feels like a TVR supercar. It feels like a TVR. If you don't want to know what that is, just a very fancy supercar, uh, sports car from the person. Yeah, yeah. It just basically it glitters and changes color in your hand. It's blue, and it, if you change it like a angle a little bit, it becomes a darker blue and sometimes purple. And it has that beautiful, like a, I don't know what that is, but it looks like a star bursting in like a really beautiful, not really ostentatiously bright, but just the right hue of gold. And the star field in script on the other side. I have to say, Maybe these are not the most manly looking pair of IEMs, but I can definitely get down with this. This is beautiful. This is art. And then, you know, let's move away from the looks. And let's talk about the hard skills, about the... Oh, come on. We, we, we don't need... We don't need to skip that. We, we can just skip that, but no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna assume you guys don't know it. So let's start with the base. That's usually what I do. Great extension, perfect amount, slightly smudgy comparing to my Blessing 2, but you know, that is not really a fair comparison. But that's nothing to break the deal now. The base is just, is the perfect amount. And it just feels like it's always there to present you with a little bit of a pizzazz. But it's not there to really annoy you, you see? It lacks a little bit of speed because I'm so, you know, used to the Blessing 2s, but man, these are 110 bucks if I didn't say it. And that's very good. And, you know, maybe the the lows are probably, the base are probably the lowest point on this pair. And it isn't even bad. 
and then we go to the mint. Oh, it's perfectly tasteful. Everything is tuned so perfectly just right. Vocal forward, not too resolving, but totally sufficiently resolving though, especially for this price bracket. They have a perfect sort of texture. Grainy texture, you know what I mean. Sort of like the Aiyati sort of grainy. And, you know, have a sort of a good balance between the graininess and muddiness. So it just pulled out in between. It just... I don't know how to say, it's a balance that is very hard to find, but I think they did it. It has some extra brightness towards, you know, sort of the higher parts of the mint. And especially in this, in the highs, but I'll talk about that later. And there's totally nothing wrong about that. That is sort of the personality, the character of the sound of the Starfields. And, oh man, it's great. And then we talk about the highs. It's very well controlled on the stock cable, with the temper occasionally straying out of control a little bit, you know, sometimes. But it's a lot better than the Blessing 2, which I already consider as a very well controlled and treble sort of IEM for me, basically. I mean, this pair can benefit from a cable upgrade that can smoothen it out, but nothing major. This pair is just the just good the way it is. It is perfectly tuned, basically. I cannot really pick anything out. I don't really go in and then listen to it and hear, I want something more. You sort of already have everything more. You, you already have that everything. And wanting something more just sort of breaks that balance. I cannot really say anything. And then we move on to soundstage. It's a little bit narrower than I imagined with the stock cable, but I did switch to the 4.4, the balanced. Oh, it, it widened this up, but you know, that's not really worthy of an upgrade if you're just, like this is basically like your entry, uh, your escape from beats, basically. I feel like that is not really necessary. The narrower sound soundstage basically comes with the prerequisite of just having like a IEM. So, nothing to break the deal, yet again. And especially with the good tearing, with the vocal forward and then everything else sort of in the back and the bass very far, it, it's good. I mean, you don't really see any, it's not a problem, but it's not a shining spot for this one. So, at the end of the day, for 110 bucks, this is the Giant Slayer, Giant Slayer. We all know that. There's no surprise to that. I won't make it sound like it's a very big, you know, uncontroversial opinion because it's not. It is that good. But we have the new kid, Round Block. And the new kid is the Moondrop Aria. I, I, God damn it, I really don't. I think I should put the picture up. I don't, cannot wreck the take picture up. Anyways, the Aria is the new kit in the block. And it's $30 cheaper. It's already very cheap. $110 for the moon, moon drop, um, the Starfield. But the Aria, it slashed it. It slashed it by like 25% or something. It's quite a lot. And from the looks, no, you don't feel like it's getting cheaper. The, it got the same sort of gold hue and the sort of same color, but it has that matte black finish to it. And a lot of people like that. I'm not one of them, but a lot of people like that. And a lot of people really do prefer this pair over the Starfield in terms of looks. And that's great. Every pair of them, they look different. And also, does the Aria have like a, a new design for the top, which it doesn't do like that really fancy curve anything? It's just flat. I think maybe cut down on production cost, maybe. Mm. <laughs> Nobody would really notice, to be honest. And then talking about a sound, I do. I do apologize for not having a video for this one and next one because, yeah, I was told not to, you know, take pictures and you know, basically take videos. Yep, yep, yep. And I forgot to take the, um, uh, 
the group photo as well. So yeah, that's me being sad. The Aria. Can we just say one thing? I don't want to go into a full review of this because it sounds basically exactly the same as <laughs> the Starfield. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be joking around, I know, it just sounds exactly the same. I cannot really hear any differences apart from, you know, a more substantial bass, which personally I feel like the um, Starfield had the perfect amount of bass. And Aria, maybe it's pushing it too far for me, but I am a weirdo. You probably know that. So I would guess most of the people would prefer the bass on the Aria a little bit more than the Starfield. The bass on the Aria, you know, because it's pushed a little bit further, like in quantity, so the quality sort of drops a little bit as well. It's a little bit more muddy and less clear comparing to the Starfield, but not a major deal. Totally not a deal breaker. And the mids and the highs, can, can I just skip them? Yeah, this is my video, I'm just gonna skip them because they sound exactly the same. But you just have to bear in mind, they are $30 ship cheaper. They basically take the Starfield, get like a fucking knife, and then just slash it. Basically, they don't want to live anymore because they have the Aria. Yep, Moondrop, they, they, have, they are audacious enough to basically slash their own products. I mean, the problem for being very courageous on cannibalizing their own product, but, you know. I'll talk about, like, the sort of roundup a little bit later now. And then, the finally, uh, I have to say, this pair. This is the KXXS. The, I would just like to call it the Cux from now on. The Moondrop Cux. This is the sort of the oldest pair out of them all. I'm sort of omitting the um, Kanas because first of all, it's very old. Second of all, I think it's out of production. Third of all, I cannot find a pair of them. So I'm gonna just treat the Cox as the oldest pair of like this brother and trilogy of IEMs. And can we say something about a Cox where I have to say, I love this look the most. You know, a lot of people probably don't and I totally get it, but I really, really do fancy the look of the polished chrome sort of look. And then, the design, they have like a few creases over here on like the IEM itself. So they will reflect light differently and basically create a very, like a, it's like looking through a prism. It looks beautiful under like any kind of light, basically any kind of light, basically. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning pair to look at. For $190, yes, it's quite a bit more expensive than the sort of newer counterparts. And a lot of people would like to say, oh, it's just like odor, so it sounds the same. No, the KXXS, the Cux, it sounds very different. Shall, I, shall we say, like, the most of the signature, if you look at a graph, I don't have it ready over here, so if you look at a graph, they will look very similar. They will look basically just like identical to one another. But the thing with the KXSS is that it have the it had a very very different membrane for the driver. It have a diamond-like membrane comparing to the other carbon nanotube or the liquid crystal or something. I don't really know. Um, this means. That despite, you know, you look at the graph, you look at the frequency response, and it's like, oh, it's all sort of the same. But no, this pair is a lot more intense than a Starfield. This pair, basically, it's... It's on another level of clearness. Like, like I'm not gonna dig into the details of the bass and the trebles and the mids, because... <laughs> they're very similar. But... I just want to talk about one thing, which is the attack of this pair. The attack and the timbre. The attack and the timbre is so much sharper on this pair. I, I'm not even kidding. For some, or actually for most people, that is not very ideal because that would make these sound a little bit more shrill than the other. And the timbre, um, a lot of... I, I don't I wanna say a lot of people, but I personally feel that the timbre on the KXXS 
it sounds more um, balanced armature if you get what I mean. It sounds very crisp and immediate, and it doesn't really stick around. I like that. I really do. It feels very... It feels like a breath of fresh air for the single driver, um, dynamic, single dynamic driver IEMs, because it just sounds quite different from everything else. Personally, this is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite out of the three. Um, no question asked. But is it worth the basically the extra um, aria from the Starfield or the extra Starfield on top of the aria? Hell no. <laughs> this is just top them cannibalizing their own product. My phone just fell off. Fuck. Yep, I basically I saw it happen. I just saw it just gonna happen, so whatever. Now, shall we just do a little bit of roundup? So, in general, the new default pair, if you just want it for yourself, is probably the Aria. It is so much cheaper than all the other ones, like all the other brothers. I don't think it's even an option. It just, if you like the looks, and if you like a little bit of extra bass, which most people coming out of, you know, regular headphones, like, you know, consumer level headphones, they will. Like, the beats, I don't know, the Raycons, that extra bit of bass could make or break the deal. And that had the extra bit of bass. So, what's not to love? If you was to com recommend any, I mean, any IEM for your friend, this is the go-to pair. I mean, you can go for maybe a blonde for the like lower price, but if your friend is already using like something, I don't know, maybe like an AirPod Pro, or maybe something like a Beats. I don't know what I don't know what Beats are that are out there. They're already spending this kind of money, so eighty dollars. I don't think that's gonna be a very hard buy for them, and this will be a very good buy for them. Buy it. And. The Starfield, I still have a special place in my heart, you know? The Starfield just is so beautiful and, you know, no, not the most masculine as I was saying. So I feel like, and also the Starfield is a little bit different with the packaging, which it doesn't have the anime girl on the front. So I feel like that will make a perfect present for someone, I don't know, maybe an imaginary girlfriend that I don't yet have. Maybe. I'm just giving you ideas. I've seen people doing it like as Mother's Day gift and I feel like that's absolutely perfect. It's beautiful and it's special and it's still $110. It's only like $30 extra and you get like the sort of the more personally I say more tasteful kind of tuning. I dig this. And KXXS, my personal favorite. I would not wreck it to anyone anymore. Because the Cux, it sort of, you know, is a little bit, it's just a little bit more, you know, specialized. And it's like an acquired taste, more, more or less. Because it's going to be so much of a turn of an event if you just went from a pair of beats to this. Because the sound of this is really crisp. And not a lot of people will accept that change that quickly. And also, because of the upkeep of this pair as, as well, I know I'm gonna dig into something very controversial, but burn-in. This pair, on the pamphlet, it says it requires 100 hours of burn-in. And that pamphlet doesn't exist in any of the other IEMs, and I feel like that's true, because I heard a pair of pre-burn-in KXXS before, and it sounds absolutely garbage. It sounds like a needle trying to kill you. But after 100 hours of burning, it sounds perfect. It sounds just so crisp and so delightful. But that 100 hours, like, your friend could have just put it on and then just say, wow, these sounds like shit, and just don't like them. Maybe they just, you fail to drag them into the rabbit hole. And that's the least thing you want. And also, um, the um, KX Success is a little bit harder to drive because of the diaphragm structure. Uh, that just means that your your friend's filthy dongles probably not gonna do it's do the things much good. So I would personally say this pair, 
I'll probably get it for myself. It's just for me, personally. I really do enjoy this pair. But if you want to re recommend it to anyone, I'll recommend not. Get it for yourself, not for anyone else. Alright, and that's the roundup of the three brothers. The three brothers from the same mother. The... Starfield. Ow, fuck. The Starfield, the Aria, and the KXXS. If you like the video, oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying this, but subscribe. You are special. Subscribe to me. I like you. Okay. Gotta wait for the end card. Is that right? Alright, that's about right. Whew. Jesus Christ, it's hot.